our other fight and wow there is a lot going on i'm taking it all in Black's bishop looks like it's hanging, but let's point out the pin along the d-file. So you really can't go for knight takes bishop because rook takes queen comes in with a check. You don't have time to capture black's queen. The first question that I'm going to throw to you guys is white really wants to get the king to safety. There's also a threat of the queen jumping into b4. He does it, but the Valbar reacts because the d4 knight comes under fire. Yeah, uh, I don't want to boast, but I did predict this whole variation a bit earlier. I showed it on the board, and I think castling was just a bit premature. Um, White's king needs to get to safety, yes, but actually it could have been okay in the center for a move or two longer. It was more important to uh, evacuate the white queen from this defile pin. The white queen, if it had moved, would have freed up the white's knight to pounce, and suddenly Fabiano... He's pinned left, right, and center. Black's bishop is threatening to come out to c5. That would be the end of the game on the Spartan. It might be collapsing here and now. Queen f6, Magnus, the speed with which he pounced and played it. I think he suddenly realized this is a golden opportunity. Yeah, and he's got a double the amount of time on the clock as well. Uh, Fabi, a very difficult position to defend. In under four minutes, he's looking at a second rank defense. Wants to slide over the rook in front of the queen. Yeah, but he's going to defend, but Black's going to do the same. You first bring your bishop out to pin that knight some more. The rook comes to d2. Then you just slide your rook up for Black. I mean, white is defending for now, but Black can increase the firepower, and white can't bring another piece to defend. So I believe the knight at this stage would have to step back to the c2 square. I want to point out the knight f5 I don't think uh, will work out either, but the b2 pawn is loose in so many positions. I was going to go for this queen sacrifice, David. You got me there. Uh, that if you take, you take on e3 with check, and then rook takes d2 at the end. You have a rook and two bishops for a queen. That's too much material. We do a quick count. 11 points for black, just 9 for the queen for white. So I think that uh, Fabiano would have to step back to c2, but then the b2 pawn is loose in many of these positions. Uh, this is no fun. I think that Fabiano, even after rook to d8, he just is under immense pressure. Too much pressure, as you say, Robert. It's uh, not just this diagonal, it's the d-file. It's all about this knight, and wow, this is all happening. If Magnus moves his rook, it looks like he has a decisive, uh, decisive advantage. Bring the final piece to the party. It's this rook on h8. It wants to be on the d-file. Stack them up, double them up, and white is collapsing. Fabiano drops his knight back into the center. Black's rook forced away. White's knight continues to harass uh, this black rook and position repeats itself. The only way to keep Black's knight alive is to repeat and draw and handshake. Abdul Satorov takes it. It's handshakes. Abdul Satorov wins set one of the semifinals against Wesley So. He was the underdog on paper, but he shows. Day. I don't know if he's uh, you know feeling under the weather or if he's just bored. But even bored Magnus is great at the board, and he just slides his bishop back. So no trades allowed to Fabiano. Okay, I didn't actually have this move on my radar. I was looking at the forcing lines, the direct routes, trade-off pieces, go for pawns, uh, try to capture stuff, try to turn your advantage into something material. Uh, but uh, he's simply dropping back, saying the bishop pair is good enough. The white king, not entirely safe. No defenders around it. And uh, we know the bishop pair, how strong they are. Black's other rook will join. Black's pawns on the king side might throw themselves forward. Still a big advantage long term and a uh, big advantage on the clock, more importantly. And things are just starting to get messy. Things are just starting to get complicated for white here. We can't imagine the bishop and the queen lining up on the diagonal, hitting that h2 pawn, a defender, a key defender on the king's side for white's king. Right now, another question for Fabi. The b2 pawn is hanging. I like this approach by Magnus. He wants to keep the tension on. The bishop pairs not allowing any trade. Fabi ignoring any threats on the b2 pawn, lining up against Magnus's king. Yeah, a good move. Activating his final piece. I was talking about the black rook joining the party. That white rook was fast asleep, snoring in the corner. And uh, at least it's staring down the black king. But I don't see any direct threats. And that, that means Magnus does have the luxury of time to activate his piece. Look at the centralization for black's rooks right now. It feels like something is brewing. Something is in the air. There's going to be some kind of bishop takes pawn on h2 with check. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it looks like with all of these pieces staring down the d file, black is going to win that battle. You usually do when there's a queen in line with a rook. Queen e1 play. I actually think you can take this pawn with check. I think Magnus can grab it and then take on the rook on d2. And at the end, he's got this queen check that will pick up his sacrificed bishop. But I would be a little bit nervous if I were Magnus because that rook on c1, it stares through the knight towards the black bishop on c6. There will be things to work out, but I do believe Magnus can snag that pawn on h2, and there he goes. 
Wow, Greek gift sacrifice. Normally, we would say when it comes to sacrificing on this type of square, but this one is based on double attacks, geometry. We see forcing moves. The king had to recapture a trade of rooks. And uh, Robert, the sting in the tail, as you mentioned, the black queen sliding to d6. Fabiano pauses. Does he have any other option? He's currently down the exchange, rook for knight. He has to simply take back and allow this check to come. Black will win back the sacrificed piece. Here we go, double attack, check. And black will profit. A pawn up in the end game. Yeah, and playing Magnus Carlsen down a pawn, the rook and bishop combining, and that pawn isn't any pawn. There is a potential of the H pawn marching down the board in the end game, creating a rook pawn passer, which are the hardest to fight for knights on the board. And Fabiano Caruana has to do this uphill defensive task under 30 seconds. No chance. I don't like to call games over before they're over, but he's also passive. His knight can hardly move because the pawns behind it will be under attack. If the queens come off the board, he's just down a pawn in an end game, and the bishop is stronger than knight because they're pawns on both sides of the board, bishops being long-range pieces. Yeah, we know it's Magnus Carlsen. Anyone else, you might stand a chance, but here the queens are off. We're in the end game now, and Black's Rook's coming in. So many targets on that second rank. That's where all of White's pawns are. An attack against the Black Bishops slows down Magnus here. Black's Bishops could simply move, though. He can be defended by the king. What will he go for, Magnus Carlsen? He's done the hard work. He's up a pawn. He just needs to slow down consolidate and uh, he should get the job done eventually. Good move there from Fabiano challenging the bishop. He also wants to bring his knight forward to c4 which he can now do because that rook can't stay on the second rank. So the black rook it's fine moving backwards but it is just a pawn so perhaps I was calling it a moment too soon. I was looking at Fabiano's clock. I was looking at Magnus confidence and you see Magnus. I mean he's perked up. He's ready to take this game. He's ready to take this game. Look at the nerves though on Fabiano. He's got half an eye on the clock. He played that move with three seconds left. Now he's been forced to put all of White's pawns on light squares. Easy targets for Black's bishop. Look at the White Knight, though, contorting, retreating to ugly posts on the edge of the board. There's a threat of Knight coming to b5, but this can be prevented. And then White's Knight will be offside. Mm. Really not good news for Caruana fans right now. Yeah, and Fabi's played such fabulous chess today, but this game, from start to finish, getting out of the opening, Magnus really put the pressure on. He put the pressure on the moment he went Longside Castle saying that he's going all out on the D-file, eventually won that D4 pawn. He's up a pawn. It's a matter of technique. Magnus Carlsen up on the clock. Fabi down to seven seconds. He wants to avoid these complications, which often happen with a knight jumping forward. A6 would be a move that I would blitz out. What else is Magnus thinking about here? He could also move his rook forward back into the second rank to go after White's pawns. A6 is a great choice, though, Tanya, because in that circumstance, you take away the knight's forward jumps. And you look at Magnus, he's just being extra careful. He doesn't want to fall into any knight forks, any tactics. So A6 would be a good choice by that standard. Yeah, I'm in your boat, Tanya. Play A6 in one second. Think later. <laughs> you've done the hard work. You've pocketed a pawn. Kill all counterplay. But Magnus, he wants a more direct route to the victory. He doesn't want to allow Caruana any chance long term. But there we go. A6 eventually does appear. And Black's Rook trying to come down to the second rank. That's been prevented. Fabi made that move again with three seconds. And a clear, visible wince there as he made it. Black's A pawn coming down the board. Targets. It's a majority attack. Three versus two on the queen side. Can Magnus just keep pushing? He keeps rolling down the board, creating a second weakness on the queen side, attacking the pawns. But right now, he first needs to keep that rook solid in the center. If Fabi was to take on a4, the a2 pick pawn becomes a huge target for black. And the problem for Fabi is that Magnus is playing on both sides of the board. He pushes a pawn. Why not push your other rook pawn? He can push that one forward a bunch and just take up space. But he gets his king involved. How could you blame him? Fabi goes to semi-open line. And as long as Magnus doesn't blunder any pawns, he will keep this advantage. That's a scary Magnus. When he makes these chill moves on the board in this relaxed state, you don't want to be sitting across that guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally the worst thing in chess when Magnus gets an endgame advantage and grinds you down. He's got an extra pawn as well. Here he just creates a safe haven for the black bishop to retreat to. Uh, Fabi zigzagging back and forth with his rook. And the black king surely is going to come in soon. Magnus first ties down white's pieces to the defense of the b pawn. And the king is coming. And there's nothing that white can do because if the knight moves or the rook moves, you lose that b3 pawn and you cannot give black a two on none on that side of the board. But if the king goes forward some more, maybe the white rook will start gaining access to key squares to go after the black king side. So you don't want to go all in. But Magnus, he's down under 40 seconds himself, everything under control thus far. But if he drops another 20 seconds, perhaps Fabi will have a chance. 
and Fabi gets rid of another set of pawns. Suddenly some counterplay potentially getting his rook active. The black bishop drops back though. What a nice move there from Magnus to keep control to remind white of the weakness. The white B pawn, the isolated pawn on the queen side. It's tying down white's pieces and now the board is even more open. That uh, really plays to the bishop's skills here, the bishop's abilities compared to the knight dominating this white knight. Mm. Really nice there, but pawns have been traded off and we see the eval bar, but is it as easy as the eval bar seems to imply? Well, white just has these two moves that you're seeing, the rook going back and forth, and now it can be freed because the b3 pawn is defended. So Magnus, he's bringing his king forward. Every single piece for him is doing his job. It kind of reminds me of the end game with Ali Reza Ferruja, where he had rook and bishop, Ali Reza had rook and knight, and now he's just targeting that weakness, and Fabi's, he has to passively defend. And now he clamps down on the king side as well, taking away more moves, more freedom from uh, Fabiano Caruana, the knight and the rook all tied down to defend b3. Zugzwang Tanya, white just can't move. White can't move the rook or the knight because the b pawn would drop if white moves the king. Black might even play a move like h4, pawn to h4. Here we go, we see it. And white's king side falls apart now. Full board awareness, black's bishop controls both flanks. The rook is so dexterous right now, attacking the white knight. And rook to d3 coming in, king coming in, white's remaining pawn will drop and Magnus will win. It's just unbelievable how easy he made this look. He just completely took away all squares from Fabi's pieces and then all of his pieces marching forward, taking away the moves, wins that extra pawn. Is he just going to capture on b3 next? I don't see why not. It looks like a free pawn and then he can rumble forward with his other pawns and he takes it. Fabi is going to try to get active with his rook, but even if he gains one pawn, there's still the other to deal with. Ooh. Charlie, the C-pawn marching down the board now. This C-pawn will cost White his knight long term. It's coming towards promotion. An attack on the rook, first of all. Magnus slides away, and Fabiano, oh. they keep playing. No fight left here, no resources left, and he resigns. He doesn't, and how many times have we seen this? Magnus Carlson with his back against the wall rises to the occasion. He delivers and takes it to Armageddon. And I think I saw a slight smile from Magnus. He's not going to be happy with his play overall, but that was a great game 